Ooh, it's so cold. I feel like my fingers aren't working. Mm, today's the first freeze, and I just went to start the tractor, and the battery's dead, so I have to jump it. batteries all the way at the front so it's really kind of difficult to access. I'm gonna try. So as many of you know that have been following, Kyle and I aren't allowed to live full time at the off-grid cabin. So him and Mowgli and I are now at the A-frame, which is also a cabin. I know it's a little confusing. If you're new here, I have videos in the past that explain what's going on. <laughs> Bye. Essentially, this is a big fixer-upper that we've taken on and we haven't really started renovations yet But I'm so excited to get into it with the fall and less daylight I really enjoy my sleeping time having a really nice mattress makes a huge difference So thank you to Birch Living for sponsoring today's video Birch makes mattresses that are crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced and their Birch natural mattress was just awarded the best mattress of 2023 by US News out of over 340 mattresses and hours of in-person expert testing. Their mattresses are also free from polyurethane foams that can cause dangerous off-gassing and are free from fiberglass which can be harmful to your health. I ordered the Birch Lux Natural Mattress, a premium upgrade to their original well-loved Birch Natural Mattress. I've had my mattress for a couple months now and it has been a total game changer. The first night we had the mattress, we fell asleep instantly, didn't wake up during the night, and then woke up completely well rested. Sometimes it does get really hot on the second floor, but the organic materials in this mattress keep me cool and regulate my body temperature. And with your Birch Mattress, you get a 100 night sleep trial along with 25-year warranty. The best part about all of this is that Birch delivers your mattress right to your door for free within the U.S. They also offer in-home setup and removal to make your buying experience as convenient as possible. I love my mattress and I think you would too. So if you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch Living. Visit birchliving.com slash Brown to get 20% off a Birch mattress plus two free eco rest pillows. For your little ones, check out the Birch Kids Natural Mattress, which is a 2023 Good Housekeeping Parenting Awards winner. So thanks again to Birch Living for sponsoring this video. Now I do want to jump back in time a little bit and show you what I've been up to at the off-grid cabin getting it ready for the cold season. The first frost has happened here at the A-frame this morning but the off-grid cabin is a couple towns over so I'm not sure what's going on there right now. Definitely got to check in on that at some point.
feels weird to be saying this considering it's sunny and 70 today, but next week is going to be the first freeze and probably snow is what it's saying in the forecast. That means I gotta crack down and finish all the to-dos before the cold season really gets into full swing make sure this place is good to go. Right now I'm building a really, really rudimentary stand for the firewood so it can be cut. It's split, but it needs to be cut because there wasn't time to repair all the firewood myself this year. Um, and then the person who was going to supply it fell through. Luckily, we found someone else that was able to give us some of their personal stash. It's kind of in rough shape. It's really long. This wood stove's really small. Therefore, some of it needs to be cut to size. So this will just give us a spot off the ground to do that. And I'm gonna stack it all today. Probably take that pine from earlier in the season and move it to the stand over here for firewood um, outside or something. Not going to burn that anymore. That was kind of a desperate measure thing. But yeah, I'm really grateful the weather's beautiful today. Soak it in a little bit more and uh, got some stuff to do inside too. It's gonna be a fun week. Like I said, really simple. I needed sort of a sawhorse situation and had a lot of extra scrap material, so now I just have a free one. This centerboard is about the maximum size that the wood stove can take for the logs. In retrospect, maybe I would have made it a little shorter to hang it off the end instead of cutting it in the middle, but this is a great way to check that it's the right size, and also I could just hang it off and do it like this too really easy and then I can see it's about the right size. Not every log will need this, but this will just make the whole process a bit more efficient. found some seasoned wood, maybe an armful or two of it under a tarp in this rack. Transfer that to the back and all this fresh pine, like I said, to the front just for outdoor firewood use. Don't want to be burning pine indoors. My battery's dying every 10 to 15 logs. I only have two of them. One is smaller than the one that's handling the 10 to 15. I have no idea what's going on. I even tried breaking out the bigger chainsaw. It's too big for this job. It's cutting the stand, it's bucking a bit. I really do think it's safest to use the smallest chainsaw. I'm also weighing my options here because there's rain in the forecast the next two days and just makes more sense. The priority should be getting the wood stacked given the circumstances instead of cutting it all to length and risking leaving the pile out in the rain for two days and then having it freeze or snow. <sighs> yeah, it's hard when things don't go the way you anticipated and things happen that are out of your control or take way longer than you ever could imagine. Just let the charger go, get as much as I can done today, and at the end, if I need to, I'll just start stacking. I do have to winterize and disassemble the sink inside. Seems like a good time to do that. It's, it's funny, because you get so sucked in. All my focus is on the wood, but step away for a second, and <laughs> it's such a beautiful day out, getting fresh air, so can't really complain. Sometimes you just gotta take a step back. <sighs> and take a breath. 
Okay, gotta take the water buckets out first. Everything's uninstalled, unhooked, unplugged. There is some rust though that I'm seeing, which is a little alarming because you do maintenance yearly, but this hardly gets used and there's a lot of rust. So I'm wondering if the anode rod, which attracts materials uh, like sediment um, or minerals in the water to it, so it doesn't corrode the water tank, but it corrodes the rod. And I wonder if that's going on. Right now I'm just draining the tank and I'm going to bring it back to the A-frame where I can do more of a deep dive on it. But it's out. It's out. And this is my first time using the shark bite tongs too. So super, super useful. <laughs> this is my first log. And my battery just died again. I ended up running out of daylight, so I started back up the next morning and then half of the entire pile toppled over. So I just threw together some temporary barriers until I can get a real rack, and after that I moved on to sealing the porch for when the snow arrives. cold and rainy out today, so I'm gonna make some chocolate chip cookies. I haven't done it in a while, so I'm pretty eager to see how they come out. I don't know if I've ever made them with whole wheat. I'm trying whole wheat flour today. The cookies need about 20 minutes in the oven, so I'm going to put some boot balm on my boots. I do this every fall going into winter. You want whatever you're applying it to to be warm and clean so it'll absorb nicely. And then the balm should be soft or a little bit liquid. And then in a circular motion, work it in. I used to buy this stuff and then I came up with my own formula, so it's available in my shop. You can do it once a year, once a season, and it'll just protect and seal and prolong the life of your goods and waterproof them. I do not want snow getting in my boots.
The air is a lot cooler out here, so I'm going to leave them on the porch to harden and seal. I'm on cookie number two right now. These are so good. They're really gooey and fall apart easily, but I am curious what the consistency is going to be when they cool down. <laughs> mm. Along with everything else I'm doing right now, since I won't be here for the entire winter, I want to take these plants to the A-frame so they can stay warm and not die. There's not too many in here, maybe five or six. Shortly after this, the very first snow arrived on November 1st. The air was thick with frigid wind and huge fluffy flakes. It coated the last of the orange autumn leaves and the evergreen trees and turned the earth crunchy with frost. It was truly mesmerizing and I just stood in it for about an hour, almost forgetting how chilly it was outside. That initial snowfall each year is so captivating and peaceful, reminding me of the magical time of year that lies just ahead here in the north.